What's good, YouTube? It's your boy D Rip. Hey, today, today we got another special video. Today we're gonna be reacting to moments that got no reaction. We already know if you haven't watched Monday Night Raw, the fifth man in the War Games match is the man that we've been waiting for for a long time, especially me, because I want him to pass Ric Flair, him and John Cena to pass Ric Flair. The man is back. Randy Orton, hopefully he'll be on SmackDown. Maybe if not SmackDown, then he'll be back right on Survivor Series on Saturday. I'm very excited. Let's get these videos going, bro. Let's get this video going. Let's continue to go crazy. I'm almost at 5K, so continue to show support. But hey, without further ado, let me know what you want me to react to next. Let's get into this video. Injuries, the worst thing that can happen to a wrestler is getting no reaction from the audience. Oh, oh, oh. It can happen to anyone. Even wrestlers like Edge, Kane, and The Undertaker have had incidents where they killed the crowd. In fact, one moment was so bad that WWE actually stopped the show and told fans they had to get louder. Before wow. I show you that, this first moment is pretty sad. At Survivor Series 2014, it was Team John Cena versus The Authority. Cena's team was stacked with The Big Show, Dolph Ziggler, Ryback, and Eric Rowan, and all of them got a big reaction, except for one. Captain. Wow. No, oh, why the cross up there? What day was that? And then there was Eric Rowan. The reason the fans had no reaction for poor Rowan was that this is the first time he used that particular entrance music. Also, fans just simply weren't into the character. A moment like that is bad, but imagine getting no reaction every time you come out. That's what happened to this next wrestler. Charlie Haas debuted mm -hmm. in a big way by being paired with Kurt Angle and Shelton Benjamin. Shelton and Haas would go on to- Hey, that young Shelton Benjamin right there? I'm telling you, bro. Dude was so promising and then he disappeared. I don't know where he went after that, but he disappeared and then he came back and he was like the rock. Like, <laughs> like he, he just came back like the rock. He was like one of the most athletic people we've ever seen. Then he came back built like the rock. So it's like, bro, I don't know what you did while you were gone, but you've been eating some rocks or something, bro. Like you've been eating nails for breakfast. I don't know what you've been on show, but you completely transformed your whole look. This dude was so athletic, it made no sense. He has some of the best ladder match, money in the bank match moments. Just him showing off his athleticism is, is, is crazy. Come two time WWE Tag Team Champions, but things went downhill after they broke up. Haas was used less and less and eventually got released in 2005. However, in 2006, Charlie Haas came be. back and the response was, well, not exactly. That was Charlie Haas? I don't even look like him. And Unfortunately, it like wasn't different. just a case of a bad crowd. This would keep happening at shows, and fans would eventually start referring to it as the Hoss Pop. And from Dallas, Texas, weighing in at 249 pounds, Charlie Hoss. Jim Ross and Jerry the King Lawler here at Penn State University. Because he doesn't Charlie have Hoss a in... consistent character, and he also doesn't have a consistent song from what I see. He has a different song this time than he did in the last clip. So, I mean... Of course, it's going to be hard to grab the audience's attention because you're constantly changing your theme and you're also changing your look. I mean, you probably don't do nothing that was that spectacular to continue to grab their attention as well. So, I mean, I don't know. Inadvertently involved. I really don't remember too much about Charlie Haas other than him being an act tag team. This was bad, but wait until you see the moment when WWE stopped a show because of how dead the crowd was. In 2010, Edge made his return at the Royal Rumble and it was immediately a face, a good guy. However, about three months later, Edge got drafted from SmackDown to Raw. The Radar Superstar made one final appearance on the blue brand to tell the fans how much they meant to him. Christian interrupted though and claimed that Edge's heartfelt speech was a load of crap. Edge admitted that Captain Charisma was right, but the crowd didn't seem to care. I can't wait to get off this show. For the last few months, I've been the puppeteer and these people have been my puppets. I've been making them dance around saying spear, 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 anytime I wanted them to. And guess what? They did it. 
The lackluster fan response was due to a combination of fans still liking Edge, especially since he had just come back from a major injury, and also just the whole heel turn not being that great. It's not surprising that WWE made Edge face again shortly after this. Mick Foley is one of the most beloved wrestlers of all time. Not only was he willing to risk his life to entertain the fans, but he's also one of the nicest guys in the world. So how could fans not react to him? Oh, trust me, there's a way. In 2006, Foley began a feud with Edge, mm. leading to their famous WrestleMania match where Mick went through a flaming table. After WrestleMania, Mick and the Radar Superstar continued their rivalry. During an episode of Raw, Edge and Mick Foley went at it again. However, Foley invited Tommy Dreamer and made it a triple threat match. It looked like the two ECW legends were going to work together until Mick Foley betrayed Tommy and revealed he was now working with Edge. The crowd barely reacted, and after the heel turn was over, they stood in silence. Because it made no sense. The fans clearly did not want to boo Mick Foley, and how could they? This was the man who nearly killed himself to give us one of the greatest moments in WWE history. It's not surprising that Mick Foley's run as a bad guy was short-lived and is rarely brought up. In 2006, Because some people don't... It just doesn't work to be a heel. Like, somebody like... Let's go Rey Mysterio. You go make Rey Mysterio a heel, it's not going to get that much of a reaction because we always know Rey Mysterio as the good guy. And it's just going to be very hard to turn him into the bad guy, like Mick Foley. Only way I can really see Mick Foley as a heel is as Mankind, but even Mankind was liked. So, I mean, it's, it's kind of hard. Kane was suffering from identity fraud when someone wore his old mask and started attacking him. The real Kane and the imposter Kane oh finally got to fight it out at the Vengeance pay-per-view. While both men brought the heat, the crowd was lukewarm at best. Well, through hell, fire, and brimstone, the imposter Kane. Ironically, something very similar happened to The Undertaker too, and it was even worse. In the mid-90s, The Undertaker disappeared from WWE after he was defeated by Yokozuna at the Royal Rumble. A few months later, the dead man returned, but he was now being controlled by Ted DiBiase. The Undertaker's original manager, Paul Bearer, claimed DiBiase's phenom was an imposter. This set the stage for the return of the real Undertaker at the 1994 SummerSlam, where the dead man came face to face with himself. Fans started off excited to see the real Undertaker return, but they quickly got bored of the match. You just hear people talking, that's so deep. Vince McMahon was doing commentary and realized the fans weren't into the match and tried to present it as a good thing. You tell me if it worked. This capacity crowd in awe. They don't know what quite to think. They they're seeing two Undertakers. This wasn't the only time fans set on their hands for The Undertaker. At WrestleMania 15... Oh, this man, this man, Vince, had every job in the business, bro. He had every, every job. He's been an interviewer. He's been a ring announcer. He's been a commentator. He's been a wrestler. He's been everything, bro. The Undertaker fought Big Boss Man in a Hell in a Cell match. Their match wasn't that great due to a number of factors, and the ending this one he made it worse. Made After defeating Boss Man, the brood lowered from the ceiling yep. and gave The Undertaker a rope that he put around Big Boss Man. Now listen to this clip and tell me what's missing. The Boss! King the Boss Man being hung from the cell! The yeah. Boss Man being hung from the cell! We got commentary and The Undertaker's entrance music, but there's no crowd reaction. If you couldn't see the fans, you would say this happened in an empty arena. Now, what could be worse than this? Having fans be silent for an entire match. Before I share this reaction, what happened, or rather what didn't happen, really wasn't the wrestler's oh. fault. Backlash 2017 is probably best- Ah, uh, Jinder Mahal, show, when he won? Jinder Mahal won the WWE oh Championship. God. Here's a question though. What match happened before that? If you said Luke Harper versus Eric Rowan, you are correct. This match match received little to no hype in the weeks before the show. To make matters worse, it was sandwiched between two big championship matches. So when that's the case, it's not surprising that this is what happened. Honestly. I miss those songs. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie. Eric Rowan's song kinda 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 hard to me. I like it. I like that I like the song. Ding ding it's not like somebody hitting some spoons on something. That doesn't sound kind of hard. Oh, and, oh, and a big power slam dumping Harper. 
Even though the crowd was absolutely dead, WWE still did not stop the show. There is one time they did, and you'll be seeing that very soon. Throughout 2010 and 2011, one of the biggest mysteries in WWE was who was the anonymous Raw General Manager. Whoever this person was, they would communicate via messages sent to a laptop. I remember Man, this. this General Manager was working from home before it was cool. Anyways, the anonymous GM disappeared before the mystery was solved, but in 2012, the remote General Manager returned for one night. Santino Morella made it his mission to find out who it was, and he got an answer. At the end of the show, Santino checked under the ring where he discovered Hornswoggle. The crowd was not amazed. Hornswoggle? Are you telling me you're the one that's been causing all of this misery? Evolution is a mystery and one of the greatest true. factions in WWE history. The group consisted of four of the biggest stars in wrestling. So, when Evolution returned after being broken up for nine years, you would think they'd get a massive reaction, even just based on the fact that all of them were superstars individually. But you would be wrong. One of the strongest factions in WWE history. I guess the crowd weren't Ruthless Aggression fans. These fans were actually pretty lucky. WWE could have publicly shamed them for being a bad crowd. And yes, WWE has been petty enough to do that. On the road to WrestleMania. It's kind of hard to cheer for Evolution though, because Evolution wasn't, a, wasn't like a good guy team. It was like mostly all villains. So it's kind of like hard to cheer for the bad guy. Like I said about Rey Mysterio, it's kind of hard not to cheer for Rey Mysterio because he's always been a good guy. And most of those guys were bad guy for most of their careers, except for Batista. Batista probably was the one that was a good guy for the longest. But at all of those, the, the the evolution. I mean, I see why they didn't get much of a pop. The way they came out, they came out like bad guys. One of the strongest factions in WWE history. They came out like the bad guys. Weren't ruthless aggression fans. These fans were actually pretty lucky. WWE could have publicly shamed them for being a bad crowd. And yes, WWE has been petty enough to do that. On the road to WrestleMania, WWE made a stop in Lafayette, Louisiana for Monday Night Raw. They ended up regretting that decision. On that night, several wrestlers got the call up from NXT, but the fans in attendance did not care. Because they don't know who they are. Nobody watches NXT that much. Like, if, if, if anybody today from NXT came up to the main roster, they don't get a good pop because nobody watches NXT that much. Compared to Raw or SmackDown, people don't watch NXT that much, so they don't even know who half of these superstars are. A lot of us didn't know who, um... Dang, I can't think of his name now. What is it? The Wallister Effect? We didn't know who he was. What, Grayson Waller? Oh, I said Wallister. <laughs> Grayson Waller. We didn't know who he was, bro. We didn't know who he was. A lot of us didn't know who he was. I didn't know who he was. I'm going to be honest. I've seen clips of him on here, but I didn't actually know anything about him. Never seen him wrestle, actually, in a match. And the only time I've seen him was on here. So, the thing about the people that don't watch YouTube and don't watch clips of wrestlers, they definitely not going to know who they are. Unless they actually see them in a the ring. A lot of us didn't know who Austin Theory was until he got in the ring. People are just now jumping on LA Knight. LA Knight didn't used to get cheered for. Now he does every night. So, if that makes sense, we didn't know who these people were. So, of course, they're not going to get a pop because nobody knows. <laughs> WWE was so irate about this that they actually made an entire video about how bad the crowd was. As a member of the WWE Universe for a long time, I was disappointed in Lafayette. While WWE called out the Lafayette crowd, there was one city that was so bad that WWE actually stopped the show to tell them. Why keep saying excited. it, bro? Just in tell us. In 2014, WWE was doing an episode of SmackDown from Liverpool, England. For whatever reason, the Liverpool fans were just not that loud. So Ziggler is one under these conditions. Backslide here on Kid, shoulders down, another kick out. Cesaro looking to take the advantage here. Vince McMahon then decided to stop the show and scold the audience personally. Oh, no matter what these people are sitting on your head, you're not cheering, you're not booing, and why? Come on, have some fun here tonight, damn it! 
Now, even if Vincent Man <laughs> would have to say, the Liverpool fans didn't do anything disrespectful. Some fans have, though, and to see what wrestlers did to them. Oh, we already watched that video, so we're not going to watch it again and tap out. You're not getting me with that today. Look, if y'all got any other videos you want me to react to in particular, let me know down below in the comments. Let me know how y'all feel about this video. And also, like this video. Subscribe if you're new. It's your boy D-Riff, man. I'm out.